Hey, my name is Chris Patrick. I'm pastor at the Wings of Life, and I'm making this video to give to a few people to let them know what I've discovered and what God has shown me uh, so that maybe between different people we can figure out exactly what does this mean. Years ago, I got involved in uh, figuring out, uh, by God's grace, what the ancient zodiac actually really means and how it preaches the gospel, and people like Marilyn Hickey and D. James Kennedy and and uh, Chuck Missler and others have all taught on it, and Perry Stone. And so I have uh, been learning it and studying it since 1986. And so most of, the, of you uh, should know by now about the, the four blood moons that are coming, 2014-15. Uh, you should know about the Harbinger and the Shemitah. Uh, so I'm not going to go into all that, but this is something unique. And this happens in September 23rd of 2017. And it lines up with the scripture in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, where it says this. This is a New King James Version. It says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And so what you see here is the woman Virgo, and here's the sun. I have diminished the sun where it's not real bright. You can still see it's there, but you can still see the stars. She's clothed with the sun. And look at the moon right here. The moon is under her feet. And there's 12 stars above her head. Now, Leo has nine star, main stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here's three planets, Venus, Mars, and Mercury above her head making this 12 stars above her head. Most people believe this woman is Israel, and this represents the 12 tribes of Israel. So anyway, uh, so I knew about this, and I had known about 3 BC, uh, and there was a movie made called The Star of Bethlehem, where the woman's clothed with the sun, the moon's at her feet, 12 stars above her head, and it was all exciting, but the more I studied it, the more I realized that this happens from time to time. This is not super rare, though this is an impressive one. The moon is closer to her feet than normal, and these stars are better spaced and look better than a lot of the ones that I've found, but I have found that there are many times that this happened through the thousands of years. And uh, there's times the moon's down here, which is technically not under her feet, but you can, you know, give and take, okay. So what happens is if you were a magi or a stargazer in Israel, uh, let's say that you were assigned to look at the stars, and you have to look at the moon to see when the year begins and when the Passover is going to be. You have to keep your eye on the moon. When the woman's clothed with the sun and the moon's at her feet, this is right at Rosh Hashanah every year. Every year the moon is at her feet. This, she's clothed with the sun. So that's not a, not a rare thing. That happens every year. What is rare is when there's 12 stars above her head. And so this happens in 2017. Well, I had found some other dates where this happens in the future too. And like I said, this is the most impressive. But So one day, about five months ago, I wake up about 4.15 in the morning, and I go into my study, and there my computer is on. And it's not supposed to be on. I shut it off, and it's on my star program here. And I'm going, uh, I don't understand. I shut it off. Did somebody mess with my computer? And I realize my son didn't do it because he don't even know my code. My wife didn't do it. And I realized that God must have sent an angel or something to turn on my computer to put it on. And this sense of awe came over me. And I'm going, oh, my gosh. And I started worshiping God. And, and I, I asked God, why uh, did you, you know, turn on my computer? And he told me to go back and look at this. There was something else he wanted to show me. Well, it took me a while to actually see what I'm fixing to show you. I didn't figure it out right, right off the bat because I was busy. I'd look at it from time to time, didn't know what else, what else is there. And finally, I saw it. And so I'm going to show you what I saw. Now, I'm going to back up in time here to 2016. So, well, I'm going the wrong way. I'm sorry. Let me go to 2016. And uh, we'll start, let's say, in the 10th month. Now, you'll see Jupiter's right here, okay? So I'm going to go forward one day at a time. And keep your eye on Jupiter and what you're going to see. Jupiter every year has something that it does. It's called retrograde motion. In fact, all the planets have this kind of motion. 
but Jupiter is the only one that has a specific timing on its motion. It's the only planet that could fulfill what you're fixing to see. All the other ones are either too fast or too slow. But the retrograde motion of Jupiter, you'll see her get it. This planet will get into the womb right here of this woman. And th this woman's hip is here and her hip is here. So the artwork is off. The woman should be more this way. Some of the other programs I have have the artwork in a better position. But I, this one here can show it to you better. So that's why I'm using it. And you're gonna, we're going to move forward and watch as Jupiter moves forward. See it? And it's going to go in to her belly basically on the 20th of November and then I'm just going to keep showing you and before this if you depicted this as a baby Jupiter is known as the king star and before it comes out it stops goes back up this is called retrograde motion and you can see that it's doing this and it's going to do this for 294 days or 42 weeks and so I looked up and I saw that they say that a, a that woman who has a baby will have her baby between 38 and 42 weeks that is normal so this is actually the normal gestation time for a woman to have a baby and here it comes fixing to be birthed on roughly the 10th which is 294 days so I'm gonna keep going forward you're gonna see that the woman is clothed with the Sun here comes the moon. Here's the moon at her feet. The woman's clothed with the sun. And here's the three stars added to the nine of Leo for a total of 12. Happens in 2017. I went back and studied this. This does not happen 6,000 years in the past uh, and, uh, and a thousand years in the future. This is the only time that Jupiter is in there for this length of time. Every 83 years, Jupiter's near to this. But uh, in the year 3915, uh, Jupiter it was the most impressive one, secondary to this, and it was 144 days, not enough for a baby to be born. This is the only time, and this is 2017, that tells me there's some sort of possible birth pains and birthing going to take place. And the reason I'm recording this, I'm going to give to a few people to help me uh, pray about it and figure out what does this mean. Does this mean the 144,000? Will, will be birthed or does this mean that the manifestations of the sons of God will come forth in the remnant or, or what does it mean I don't know but uh, I'm still studying that but I thought it needed to be known and if I've given you this then I'm giving it to you because I trust that you're someone that could uh, look into it and maybe even give to some other people who could look into it to see what is God saying here now we know about the blood moons and we know about the year 2015 and the harbinger the Shemitah, all that, we know about that. But uh, here's something new, and I wanted to pass it on to you. Now, I want to uh, keep going here, and I want to show you what happens after this. Keep your eye on Jupiter. I don't know if you can see Jupiter. I'm going to go backwards and show it to you. be easier. See, Jupiter did that. Now keep your eye on Jupiter there. Watch Jupiter go right here. Watch Jupiter go into retrograde motion here in 2016. See it? It does that every year. It moves a little bit all the way around. So that's nothing new. All the people who were magis knew how these wandering planets or these wandering stars would move back and forth, back and forth. So there are some interesting things uh, happening. And here's one more thing in 2015, if I can show it. Let me see. Here at Regulus, watch this. Let me show you. Going the wrong way. Look at this right here. These very close to one another. Now that's not super rare, but that is beautiful. And so on 8-7 of 2015, that will be a sight to behold in the heavens. I don't know any biblical meaning that that could have whatsoever. I'm sure there's a meaning to it, but I don't know what it is. I just stick with the scriptures as best I can. But the whole the whole zodiac teaches the gospel from the virgin birth right here to Jesus' death on the cross, his war with our enemy, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which there was a comment in that sign. A comment was in the persecution of the church sign in 2013. 
And then there's the rapture of the church sign, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. And then there was the, uh, of course, the wrath of God here in Leo the Lion, where the Leo the Lion represents Jesus, tearing the shreds, Hydra the serpent, tearing him up, crater the cup of wrath being poured out on him, Corvus over here, the raven. You can see this right here. And this is Hydra. And so I have teachings on our on our website that goes through the whole thing. You can go to www.wings-of-life.com and see me teach on the, the Zodiac, and, and it's powerful. So uh, I'm going to show you something here that I'm going to have to go to an old video I made and just show you what the rapture of the church sign that uh, I discovered and God showed me back in 1987. But I want to show you the depiction of it right here on this program. So let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Now, I have the ancient zodiac drawn out that I'll show you when I go to the... Let's see if I can get this to do what I want it to do. Okay. <clears throat> You'll see me talk about Argo Navis the ship, okay? That's right here. This ship is in the clouds. See the clouds here? It's the Milky Way. Here's the large Magellanic cloud. Here's the small Magellanic cloud. And so uh, they have a lot of modern uh, constellations here that are not in the ancient, so you won't see that on my other. But I wanted to, to show you, according to Marilyn Hickey and Chuck Missler and just everybody that you'll ever read on this, E.W. Bullinger, you know, William Banks, K.C. Fleming, they all say this represents the catching away of the church. The church is safely home. And you'll see me teach on that. But I wanted you to see that the ship is in the clouds when you see this. And these clouds here, here's the Dorado fish that uh, you can study online about Dorados. They're also known as uh, dolphin fish. They're also known as Mahi Mahi. And uh, they change color on death. You'll hear me talk about that. Here's Volans, the flying fish. So I'm going to leave you with that. And we're going to go to the video that I made here years ago that... Um, will explain the rapture of the church sign to you. So in the meantime, as you see these things, uh, feel free to give me a call at 251-510-5162 if you wanted to talk about it some more because I'm only giving you surface things uh, about all this that might would pique your interest to give it to someone else more knowledgeable than me that might could solve these riddles. But we already know Jesus is coming soon. So what I'm going to show you is how there was a new star appear right here in the Large Magellanic Cloud back on February 23rd, 1987, and what this is telling us for today. It's only the eighth star to become visible to the naked eye since 1604. So this doesn't happen every day, and there's a message in it, and you'll see me talk about it. So God bless you, and I hope you enjoy it. Then we go to Argo the ship. This is the last deacon of cancer. This has yet to be fulfilled. We're, we're kind of in the sign of cancer and that God is calling us out of the world and getting us into his, his kingdom, into his sheepfold. And there's a time coming when this will be fulfilled. And it's known as a company of travelers. Some of the star names of Argo are Canopus, the possession of him who cometh. Markab, returning from afar. By the way, uh, you can't return from afar. You, you remember that little joke, that boy come? He was um, supposed to be an actor in the play with the wise men, you know, and everything when he was a kid. And so they said, they said dressed the part, so he come dressed up as a fireman. And he said, hey, uh, why are you dressed like a fireman? He said, well, they said they come from afar. <laughs> no, they come from afar. But returning from afar... Can you, returning, you must come once, then leave in order to return. This is the second coming. Safina means the multitude. By the way, this is a huge ship in the sky that uh, has of about 60 years ago, uh, they renamed it, but 60 years ago and back, it was Argo the ship. But now they call it uh, Carina, the keel, and uh, uh, Puppis and Vela, I believe it's called, in three parts of a ship. Because uh, the thing is huge. There's plenty of room in this ship, by the way, for you, uh, for a multitude. Ask Miss Disco, the released who traveled. I remember I was at the Mobile Public Library when I seen that Ask Miss Disco, 
And I went, wow, I know that word. I don't even know why I knew it, but I did a study years ago on that word somehow. And I knew it meant the rapture of the church, the catching away. It means going from, immor from mortality to immortality. And when I saw that, I was just shocked. We're, what are we released from? We're released from mortality to immortality. So hell, the desired, and Subalon, the branch. By the way, Jesus is there, the branch. You can kind of see his face at the front of the boat there. This is actually Jesus. And everybody I've ever read says that this is what they call the rapture of the church or the catching away. Because the ship, sails are up, the oars are back. It has been on its long journey. And, it, you know, Jason and the Argonauts, if you remember the story. And it's been on a journey and they came back. The oars are back now and it's in dock. And uh, they're safe. They have returned. Well... Something happened here that I'm going to tell you about. I knew this and some other things. And on February 23rd of 1987, I was at my mother's house. And she, I, I was, at that time, I was painting for a living. And uh, I was painting not too far away. So she said, well, look, you're near here. I'll cook you lunch. Come by. And I said, okay, she's full-blooded Italian and great cook. So I can't turn that down. So here I come over the house to eat, and on the way out the door, I opened the door, and I heard on the TV, this is the only time I've ever heard it, news flash. And I went, huh? And I just stuck my ear back. There has been a supernova in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Well, when I heard that, I'm like, what? And then I run, and I had to go around the bar and everything, get up there, and by the time I get there, it's almost over. And I'm like, yeah, because I know something. Things don't happen by accident. I hear the word coincidence is a non-kosher word to the Jews because there is no coincidences. Things happen at set and appointed times. Yeah. See, that supernova, when it went off, God wasn't up there going, you stupid star, no, don't do that. Oh, I didn't want you to do that. You messed up my plan. No, it happened because he wanted it to happen. But did you know I couldn't find no information on this thing for like three months? It was like a news blackout on it. And, of course, they didn't have the Internet back then, et cetera, et cetera, but still... Uh, I couldn't find nothing. And even later on, as I was finally found out about it and read articles, uh, some of the, new, uh, the scientists were saying, what's wrong with our uh, news media? Because they just not many people reporting on it at all. It was just unbelievable. The greatest scientific astronomical event to happen last century, nobody wants to report on it. Why do you think that might be? No. I think the old devil tried to hinder it. He can't stop, but he hindered because he knows, he knows that everything that happens in that star chart up there is God a design to it. There ain't no accidents, and he's trying to hide it. And so, um, so anyway, finally I did find out about it, and I looked in a certain area of the sky. And um, before we look at what else is here and what I discovered, I'm going to read to you, we'll look at what the Bible has to say about the future, what we call the catching away of the rapture of the church, two different places. The first place here, we'll read it, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. And as far as we know, the Apostle Paul was the first one to reveal this mystery. He said, We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, in the Bible, when you see the word sleep, when it's always speaking of Christians and they have died, and their spirit and soul has gone to heaven because to be absent from the body is what? Your body's on the earth, but your spirit and soul is in heaven. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So you're a three-part being. And when you die, the real you pops out and you get to go to heaven. And then you'll come back with Jesus. And when this happens in these two things, and you'll see. So it says, this will happen. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, we already saw in the sky that the change must be being released from mortality, but we'll look at it. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised, what? Incorruptible. And we shall be changed. That's those who are so alive and remain. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. I can't wait to that. The word mortal is a word that just means death doomed, your body is death doomed. Immortal it just means not death doomed. And I can't wait, wait to be immortal. What about you? Amen. This body here is 52 years old, and I, I liked it better when it was about 25. Uh, it doesn't do as good as it used to. Then there's another scripture here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, But I would 
not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Anytime the Bible says, I don't want you to be ignorant of something, that's always the thing most people are most ignorant of. Every time. I would have you not be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And I meet people all the time and say, could you tell me the nine spiritual gifts? They can't do it. The Bible says you're supposed to desire earnestly spiritual gifts. How can you desire something you don't even know what they are? It's like the armor of God. How can you be wearing the armor of God? You don't even know what it is. You got to know. That's why God says my people are destroyed for a lack of what? No. And so don't be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Speaking of Christians who have died, that you sorrow not as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede them which are asleep. For the, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the what? Everybody say clouds. To meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So when I went and I studied this area of the sky where the star happened right here. In fact, here's a picture of this star right here. This is the star that appeared. It was a supernova and it was visible for about one year to the naked eye. You see that? So I saw where it is. It happened in what's called the Large Magellanic Cloud, and it has a neighbor, the Small Magellanic Cloud. When I saw that the ship was in the clouds, I went, yeah, this is the rapture of the church for sure, because we're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds. Not, one, not, a, not a cloud, but clouds. But then I saw Dorado the goldfish, and I knew the fish represented the Christians. So here's this fish, and I looked it up, and according to the book, The North Star of the Southern Cross, this represents a uh, species of goldfish that changes color on death. We shall be changed in a moment, twinkling of an eye. And then here's recticulum the net, and what does recticulum uh, the net do but just catch up the fish? Here's Volans the flying fish. These fishes are in the cloud catching them up and bringing them into the ship. Wow. If I gave you an assignment... To, in picture form, depict the rapture of the church. You will not beat that right there. There's been a few things in my life that really brought tears to my eyes. And I remember this one here. It got me good. It's like, my God, what have you done again? Do you know why? Because God used somebody who was a house painter. That's all I was. I wasn't ordained or anything like that. Seven years digging and studying this kind of stuff. And God used me down on Dolphin Island to put a hook in my jar to reel me in to figure this thing out. And if he didn't reveal it, I wouldn't know it. So I'm, don't believe me, I'm not the... Some of y'all think I'm real smart, but I just think I'm a little above average. I just put an above average effort, that's all. Well, I remember teaching on the end times back in 1988. And I was going to be teaching on this. And I realized one night I woke up about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, sat straight up in the bed, and I realized something. Because here's Volans, the flying fish. And I knew, I knew what it represented, a flying fish, you know, is normally in the water, but it can fly. You know, we're going to fly away. But then I realized, oh, that fish, Volans, represents the dead in Christ shall rise first. Because it's nearer to the ship. And it's a smaller fish. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him. Did you know there are more Christians alive today than have died in Christ because of the, the, the astronomical, the, the growth of the population? There are more Christians alive today than have died in Christ. And I went, oh my gosh. Then they said this star is going to shine again at some point in time. They don't know when, how bright it will get. They're not sure. They remembered the star in 1572 that re-came back in 1604. They call it Kepler's Nova. How can the same star shine again? Well, there's a lot of science to it. I don't have really time to get into it. But they say that this star here has the same potential. And guess what? It's starting to re-shine again. And I think it's right at naked eye visibility. Will it get brighter? You know, because naked eye is barely seen. That's not enough. It's got to stand out. But there is, this, there is this star, and I believe it's named Eta Carina. I believe it's somewhere right up in here. And they said that it's some kind of very weird variable type star. And they think, just knowing the science of it, that at any time now, uh, 
It's hard to say now, 20 years, 50 years from now, whatever. They believe it will become the brightest star in the sky. Maybe so bright you could read your newspaper <laughs> under it because of some science that's going on with it. So I'm not a prophet and I can't make a prediction, but I'm just suspicious that at the rapture of the church, that star will shine bright. And if that thing shines, you better get your shoes shine. And maybe you're already on. And maybe both of them will shine. You see, he came as a lamb, remember? And, and he came with a little drama. Even as a lamb of God, he comes with a little drama. Uh, what we saw in the sky. Uh, he had uh, some angels singing. The shepherds saw it. Eventually the magi showed up, probably in December, we think. And you can read, uh, you can watch the movie uh, The Star of Bethlehem. And go to the website, thestarbethlehem.net, and find out more about the Star of Bethlehem. I didn't have time to teach you that they found out about it. And we think it was on December 25th that they actually showed up based on the stars. So that might be an interesting little date. But he wasn't born on that day. But anyway, if he comes back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, do you think there'll be more drama? What the Bible reveals is going to be a whole lot of drama when he comes back. Every eye will see him. And he touches down the mountain and it cracks in half. And the biggest earthquake the world's ever seen and all kinds of stuff will be going on. And I think we're going to be alive to see most of this stuff. What is this trying to tell you and me? The next event to unfold on God's calendar of events will be the catching away of the church. We already know that, don't we? Yeah. I don't need to... It's that, I've got it. But whatever he wrote in the Bible and whatever he set in the stars, it's a set and appointed time he's got there. Everything is set. Yeah. And now on let's this go computer, ahead. I have a program called Pan, excuse me, called Starry Night. And uh, it's a program that's as accurate as anything NASA has. And uh, we're looking at Comet Pan Star right here. And this is Pisces, Australis, or Strenis, some um, different translations. But the, um, it starts here, and it's going to work its way around over here. You notice Aquarius, the sun, is clothing. Aquarius has, Revelation 12 says, the woman was clothed with the sun, and the moon was at her feet. And you'll see that on my other teaching. The um, Aquarius is closed here, and so this is telling me that the, the, the meaning of this is subject to here, but it's going to work its way around over here. And so just because this is hard for me to explain without a picture, we're going to go to the pictures. I'll explain that to you, then we'll come back to this. Okay, we're looking at Aquarius here, and Aquarius has his arm back. This depicts uh, the result of his dying on the cross and his redeeming work will be what? And it'll be uh, the blessing. You see Aquarius has an urn in his hand pouring out water into the fish's mouth. The fish always represents the Christians. Uh, by extension, even, even can represent the Jewish, the Israeli nation. But it, but it overall represents anyone who's a believer, both Jew or Gentile. And so this urn uh, is pouring out the grace of God. And that's where you'll see that that comet begins there in Pisces with the big fish, Australis. Uh, and it moves on up into Pisces. Now, if you see Pisces, Pisces is two fishes that has a band tied around their tail. This band goes back to this sea monster named Cetus, which represents Satan. Satan's feet is in the river Uranus, which flows in the outer darkness, which spells his ultimate doom. Ares, the Lamb of God, there Jesus really, has got his leg between those two bands. And the name for the band in, is actually the word for bridle, which basically says that he's got the horse's bridle, or he's, got, he's in control of this conflict between Satan and us. And yet you'll see the Pisces, the fish near Aquarius, there's just enough band for this fish to get up in there and get into the blessings, the grace of God, and the, and the Spirit of God. And so this fish and this constellation, this comet going into the Pisces, it's telling us there's a time of conflict coming, but it's also saying stay in position. Get in position for the blessing because you can get out of position. And uh, uh, Brother Kenneth, you had prophesied that stay in faith, stay in love, uh, stay steadfast. That's what that's telling me is you stay in position to receive this outpouring of God. 
this grace of God. And so uh, that's to me, that's the message. John Kilpatrick is saying it. Other people are saying it. Stay in position. And so um, if you'll notice the other fish is up there touching Andromeda. Andromeda represents the persecuted church. And this a comet does go into Andromeda, which means there will be persecution of some of the Christians. It's already happening now and it's increasing. But in the midst of all this, the grace of God will abound greatly. Um, so that's kind of the message of these symbols. Okay, now that I've explained it to you, I want to go ahead and use this computer and I can do all kinds of things. I have the daylight dimmed so you can still see where the sun is. This view is from outer space and I'm doing it this way. Most people don't get to look at it like this, but uh, just so you can see it better. And I'm going to hit 30,000 speed and you'll see how aquari the sun is moving. Here's the comet moving in the fish's mouth. So the water went in the fish's mouth represents the outpouring of God's grace his blessing and his spirit on the earth and so that's what it's telling me Mars is moving from where the water comes out over here and uh, you see this comet moving its way over into uh, Pisces uh, the fishes which I explained a little to you and the planets have meaning I haven't really figured out for sure what they mean I don't like to be dogmatic on things that I'm not sure of the only thing I we speculate that Mars represents war if you see Mars anywhere and I can't even be biblical on that but uh, it seems like it might be true and you can see here's the moon we're going to go to Fort Worth Texas here in a minute and show you this same view but there's the moon there's the comet there's the sun having moved from Aquarius now into Pisces is saying that this is another meaning to this the outpouring of God's grace the outpouring of um, his blessings in the Spirit of God and then there's going to be this time of conflict here, uh, struggle between Satan and God. In fact, um, if you've seen Aquarius on that last one, his hand is pointed back and um, <clears throat> saying that as a result of the prophetic redemptive work of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, uh, the result will be, and this is the next chapter because we've got three chapters in the heavens, four constellations each, and this chapter is the, the results of what he would do. Would be, this would be what would happen. And one would be the outpouring of God's grace and his blessings, the spirit. And even, even though that happens, we're still going to have trouble with the devil. And there'd be a conflict. Now, this Mars, if I'm right about Mars and it symbolizes war, then uh, this means that war will come to Israel and, there, and then in, in the natural realm and the spirit realm, there'd be an increase of war spiritually a conflict of some sort. I'm only speculating that may not be true. I'm just going to go by the meanings of the constellations that the comet go through. It eventually works its way up here. As I hit play again, it's going to work its way over here to Andromeda, and Andromeda represents the persecuted church. So it tells me some of these fish people, even in the midst of conflict, will have grace in their life, but there will be some persecution on some of the people. And I predict, if that's true, the persecution will be more in nations around Israel and Islamic countries and stuff, if I'm right about that.